In this lecture, we would like to talk about the complex form of Fourier series. In other words, we would like to represent the periodic function instead of in terms of the cosine and the sine function. We want to express the Fourier series in the complex form. So, in order to talk about the complex form of Fourier series, let us start with the so-called Euler equation or Euler identity that we have learned sometimes before. It say E raised to the power I x is equal to cosine of x plus I psi of x. In this equation, the definition of I basically is I square is equal to minus 1. So that is the definition of I in the Euler equation, Euler identity. So with that definition of e raised to the power i x, we can say something about, let's say, what happened in that case then, e raised to the power minus i x is equal to what? Well, the answer is very easy. All we have to do is, whenever you see x in the above equation, you just replace by minus x. So the above equation will become cosine of, instead of x, now become minus x. And then plus i sine of, whenever you see x, we replace by minus x. Okay, so that is the definition of e raised to the power minus i x based on the definition of e raised to the power i x. Now, on the other hand, we realize that cosine of a function of an angle is an even function. And because of that reason, cosine of minus x is the same thing as cosine of plus x. The sine of an angle is an odd function. And because of that reason, if you change from minus x to become plus x, then it, the, the function value will change the sine. So this plus will become minus. So to summarize it, e raised to the power minus x is defined according to the second equation right there, which is equal to cos of x minus i psi of x. So based on those two definitions, we can immediately calculate the psi of x is equal to e. We can easily calculate. We can easily calculate uh, psi of x is equal to e raised to the power i x minus e raised to the power minus x divided by 2i. This relationship, it is not too difficult to establish because all we have to do is we just substitute e raised to the power i x with this formula in terms of cos and psi and then we substitute the e raised to the power minus x with the second formula. Then we can establish psi of x is equal to e i x minus e minus i x divided by 2i. Again, from the Euler identity, the definition of e raised to the power i x and e raised to the power minus i x, we can also establish the fact that cosine of an angle x can be expressed in terms of the exponential form as e raised to the power i x plus e raised to the power minus i x over 2. As I mentioned to you several times, cosine is an even function. And the reason is because if you change the angle x to become plus or minus x, the cosine doesn't change the value. On the other hand, uh, psi 
of an angle x is an odd function. And the reason is because if we change the psi of x, then the function psi of x will also change the psi. Okay? So, based on that fact, then the Fourier series that we have earlier can be expressed in the different form. Because if you remember, in the previous lecture, we already say any periodic function f of t can be expressed as a constant a naught plus summation of a sub k cosine of k omega naught t plus summation of bk times psi of k omega naught t. And if you remember, we already expressed cosine of an angle k omega naught t in terms of the exponential form, as I indicated in equation 33. And look at the green portion. Similarly, on the previous slide, I already expressed sine of an angle k omega naught t in terms of the exponential form as indicated in the blue term shown in equation 33. So, we already got equation 33 so far. The next thing we can do is we can factor out any term that involved with e raised to the power i k omega naught t, this term, factor out. So this is a term that we factor out. And what you have left is this parenthesis. OK? And then similarly, we can factorize the term that involved with e raised to the power minus i k omega naught t. The same term in here, you have e raised to the power minus i k omega naught t. That term can be factored out right here in equation 34. And the remaining term we have is shown in this parenthesis right there. So we already finished the discussion of equation 34. Now, based on equation 34, we define a couple of things. We define a naught is, is equal to c tilde naught. And we define c tilde k as equal to a k minus i b k over 2. So we define c sub k is equal to a k minus i b k over 2. Now, if we define c to the k is like that, then the question becomes, what is the definition of c tilde minus k? Well, it is very easy. All we have to do is, whenever you see k, in the definition given by equation 36, we just simply replace it by minus k. So as you can see, this k in here in equation 36, we replace by minus k. This bk in here in equation 36 now become b of minus k. All right, so this is what we have equation 37. However, according to my previous lecture, we know the function a sub k is an even function, even function. According to my previous lecture, I already explained to you. And what it means is a sub k is the same thing as So what it means is a sub k is the same thing as a of minus k. Now, also, in my previous lecture, I say b sub k is an odd function. 
an arc function. And what it means is, let's say from equation 37, you have a minus sign here, and then I, and then B minus K divide by 2. However, because B sub K is an odd function, that means if I ch change the psi minus K to become plus K, then the function itself will also change the psi. So we also have to change the psi in here because B sub K is an odd function. So to summarize it, equation 36 gives you the definition of C tilde K. Equation 37 gives you the definition of C tilde minus K, which is equal to A sub K plus I B K over 2. So using the new definition shown to you in equation 35, 36, and 37, if you go back to the previous equation, you can see we can replace this AK minus IBK over two term, we can replace that by C tilde K. And we can replace this parenthesis here by C tilde minus K. And this constant A sub zero in here, according to our new definition, it is C tilde zero. Therefore, equation 34 can be expressed in a different form as I will show you on the next slide. Oh, by the way, this definition of C tilde minus K shown in equation 38, I already explained to you. And therefore, the periodic function f of t can be expressed in terms of the new definition C tilde naught, C tilde k, and C tilde minus k, as I told you earlier. OK, the next thing we can do is this. The first two terms on the right-hand side, we can combine together. The only thing different is when you combine when we combine the first two terms together, the first two terms when we combine together, then the summation will go from zero to infinity. All right? So instead of k going from one to infinity, now it will go from zero to infinity. Now as you can see very clearly from this term in here, when you let k equal to zero, then what you have is just C tilde naught, C tilde sub zero, which is this term. And then when k equal to one, two, up to infinity, then you recover back this summation term. So it is very clearly the first two terms can be combined together. All right, now let's look at the last term that we show you over there, the last term on the right hand side. For the last term, the right hand side, suppose whenever you see k, you replace by minus k. Let's see what happens. By the way, k go from 1 to k go to infinity. That is the summation index. So now if you replace, whenever you see k, you replace by minus k. So k will be replaced by minus k. k will be replaced by minus k k will be replaced by minus k, and that minus combined with this minus become plus k, okay? And this k in here will be replaced by minus k. Then, in that case, then you can see the last summation term right here can be expressed like this. So, the, the summation will go from minus one to minus infinity, because this minus sign here, you can move to the other side, okay? So this summation of the last